Now, I, I went there because his new book's out. We're going to get into that, get into the economy. He was on like four years ago with us. Everybody knows who Robert Kiyosaki is, the mega million best time seller uh, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, successful entrepreneur, owns mines all over the world and factories. I mean, he's a true entrepreneur. And anyone who's been an entrepreneur knows that's the heart of everything. So they demonize entrepreneurship. Like Obama said, if you have a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else built that. So when Kiyosaki speaks with us the next 50 minutes, this is not Kiyosaki. This is the state speaking. And Cuomo has come out and said, I have the quote here, we played the clip earlier, uh, that uh, our rights do not come from God, they come from the state. But we say God, even if you're an atheist, so that the state doesn't become God. Duh, put something above the state. The individual's above the state here. So when we get down to it, we're saying we are God. That ought to make you Satanists happy. But you, you, you can't even get that, can you? It just, you do not. The state must be God. Uh, so I wanted to bring up real discrimination with Robert Kiyosaki. Throw him a curveball first. Uh, best known for Rich Dad, Poor Dad, number one personal finance book of all time. Kiyosaki has uh, challenged and changed the way tens of millions of people around the world think about money. He's an entrepreneur, educator, investor who believes in the world needs more entrepreneurs. And he's got a new book out. Uh, the Second Chance for Your Money, Your Life, and Your World just came out this month. It's already a bestseller at richdad.com, richdad.com. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Uh, what do you think about them trying to label uh, things that obviously aren't racist as racist to divert, or, or, or do you disagree with me, from all the real discrimination that's going on uh, inside government and by the governing class and those that are allied with them? I see this as causing a major trend of lawlessness as people... But I'm going, hey, I'm just here to find out. But it was so tense. You know, there was a little woman, she was about probably 80 years old. The war vets went to her farm in Zimbabwe <coughs> and kicked her off. And I saw this little lady, she, com she comes up to me and she says, you know, you know, she's screaming at me in Afrikaans, which I don't speak. But I, it was just a futility after 400 years, she and her husband lose the farm their parents gave to them. And I don't know if that's going to happen here, but it's frightening. The thing I did find out in Zimbabwe was what kind of triggered the collapse of Zimbabwe dollar was a thing called retirement pensions. That's right. And the U.S. is sitting in the same precarious position right now. Wasn't it government pensions? Government, any kind of pension. Yeah. With millions of people counting on the government pension to keep them alive when they retire. That's what I'm afraid of. That's why after talking to Harry Dent, I was depressed. And I'm upset. When we come back, we're going to get into your new book and other world events taking place. Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is our guest. You go to his website. Ladies and gentlemen, it's got a lot of powerful information, richdad.com. And we got to get this guy back more often than every four years. I only get him on every few months. And we'll also open the phones up. So stay with us. We'll be right back on the other side, 800-259-9231. We're for your money, for your life, and for our world is the new book. Uh, and he is joining us right now. Uh, it's uh, Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs. I want you to talk about your book and any other issues you want to get to, and then I want to take a few phone calls, uh, Robert. Yeah, first of all, uh, Eight Lessons of Military Leadership is a book coming out in a couple of months. Well, I can't uh, wait to read that one, too. Yeah. yeah, and Second Chance is about where we are today. And people may need to change some of the things they're doing. If I could mention Second Chance, if I show it up to you. I love what you do because you give people like me, people with a different point of view, a chance to speak. Versus what happens on television a lot of times. They'll put one person with one point of view and a person with another point of view. And they yell at each other. And we learn nothing. The plan so, is to teach us how to fight with each other and never actually yeah. come together. Yeah. So I appreciate what you do, and I agree with you. You know, cash is only one thing. It's put fuel in your tank. And to keep your business going, keep your programs going, and support, you know, people and messages you like. So I agree wholeheartedly with you. Uh, the reason I wrote Second Chance is because of all the confusion. So if I could be bold and show you a picture from the book here. Uh, oh, what you'll see here are pictures. And although it's a very big book, the reason I made it in pictures is so that you didn't have to listen to the people yelling back and forth. Also, what happens for many people is when they read economic terms, they get confused. So Second Chance, part one especially, 
is everything's in pictures. So a 10-year-old kid could read it, an adult could read it, and the best thing about it is parent and adult or old guys and young guys could discuss the pictures rather than get confused about all from all the economic jargon that's thrown out there, like what is the GDP versus NDA and all this stuff. It's just pictures. So when you have a second chance it's about pictures, you can explain to your family or kids by pointing, because you know, your, your kids will probably not read it, but they can see the pictures. And I think that's what makes the book different. Like, I'm not pushing an agenda. When you see, like I said, in 1971, 72, when I was in Vietnam, you know, I went, oh my God, I better wake up. You know, something's happening here. And that's when Nixon took us off the gold standard. And if you know what happened, we started printing and the biggest boom in history ever took off. We have never been this high. 17,000 Dow. Then in 1978, this was all in pictures and second chance. In 1978, the 401k came out. And basically what that was, the 401k was, there were the big corporations were saying to the little employees, hey, you're on your own, dude. You know, if you run out of money when you retire, it's no longer our problem. So when you see the 401k from that perspective, like it's the other side of the coin, and you look at the pictures, then you can sure. start making different, distinct, different decisions for you, your family, and your life. What do you make about the big banking cartels uh, worldwide, and now they're floating in here at the State of the Union, the government, quote, taking over private 401ks and education 401ks to, quote, protect them, but throwing in class envy that these are you know, lazy trust fund kids when they average things like $25,000. I mean, that's really scary when they start sniffing around the pension funds, the private pension funds. I and mean, that's what we're talking about here. And health care. Yeah. The whole thing, you talked about socialism versus capitalism. You know, I was a Marine. I fought for capitalism. I didn't fight for socialism. You know, when people say, what happened to the American dream? The American dream has gone to the entitlement mentality. And I look at all our senators and Congress and our presidents. They all expect the government to take care of them. And what's going to happen, if I'm correct, in 2016, and the whole uh, stock market house of cards comes down, that means everybody who is counting on the government or the IRA or their 401k, they may be up the creek without a paddle. So that's why I started the Rich Dad Company back in 1997. What do you recommend? I can't wait because I haven't bought your book yet. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to read it because I need to get my act together. I mean, I'm always learning more. Um, I can't wait, though, till the other book comes out, uh, Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs. Give us a sneak peek on that. Well, it's about, you know, we have a, we have a high uh, <clears throat> number of veterans who are unemployed. I mean, they're, they're homeless, a lot of them. What I'm saying is that the military gave them some of the best training to become entrepreneurs, not employees. And they, you know, they gave them such things as, you know, unity, courage, initiative, uh, skills. And so most of our veterans are actually natural entrepreneurs, except when they come back from the war, they're trying to fit into the corporate world. And a lot of them just don't fit. So eight lessons for military, um, for military leadership is about how every military person from the lowest private to the general, already good entrepreneurs because they have great training. Flesh that out a bit, then I want to take some calls because it is fascinating. I found vets do real good in my operation because I just say, here's the mission, have integrity, you know, report news, uh, have an open bias of telling the truth, and from a perspective of freedom, get out there. We want people to really dominate and break big stories. And I found people like Joe Biggs, they just get out there, they get it, they have a mission, I turn them loose. Like when I was, uh, you know, I was a Marine pilot, flew the helicopter gunship. And if my major came down to me and says, hey, Lieutenant, take out that machine gun nest. He didn't say, well, I don't feel like it. <laughs> 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 I mean, he just, you did it or died. I mean, that is how Marines and most military people are trained. What type of gunship? Was it a Cobra or what was it? Both. I flew the Huey gunship and the Cobra gunship. Wow, I'd like to have you on about that. That's interesting. I really loved it. But um, anyway, that's why military personnel are all are trained to be entrepreneurs. They're, they're, they're going to get the job done. And that's why the Marines had so much so many problems in Fallujah. Not to, not to berate my brother in the Army, but the Army Marines took Fallujah, and then the Army went back in. They lost it, and Marines went back in. But a lot of my friends were brought up on court-martial because they did the job. They killed people. 
And um, I hate to say that, but that's what Marines are trained to do. Yeah, what about political correctness in the military? I mean, you know, I, I, I'm against those wars, but once they're there, you know, they're going to court-martial people because they are getting shot up from a house, they shoot the house up, and then they shoot a civilian. I mean, you can't blame the individual, in my view. I, I'm sorry. It's disgusting. My friend is a three-star general, and he has to be politically correct. Now, he's my roommate in Vietnam, and he says, I cannot say what I want to say because it looks bad upon the Marine Corps. And when, it, when, your, when your generals are not allowed to speak, we have a serious political correctness problem. And uh, it's sad. Look, ISIS is actually doing us a big favor right now. They're really upsetting the whole world. You know, they, if they actually put on video of them beheading a little kid, the world would come and blow them out of the water. But right now, they're only beheading men. But when they start be, beheading women and kids, I think then the Marine Corps will step up. Well, they're doing it. They're just smart enough not to put it on video. And I tell you, what a yeah. despicable group of dirtbags. Oh. I mean, those people are just unbelievable. Um, yeah. You look at the, the eyes of those people. They just look like a bunch of Charles Mansons. I don't know how you can find such large groups of people that have a Charlie Manson look in their eye all the time. I mean, all the people I know that look like that are on PCP. Robert, what do you think is going on with these people? Alex, I have no idea. Look, you know, I have, a, I have a, had a good friend who is Muslim. And I never met a man who hated so much. He's a good friend, but he hated Jews. And I kept asking him, I said, Sally, how in the world can you hate somebody that much? You know, because I hate, but I don't hate that much. And that's the question is, how could you go and do basically atrocities to your fellow human being and think you're doing it in the name of God? It is beyond my comprehension. So that's why I, I think we need to be stronger, but we also take different approaches. That neutralizes ISIS threat. Well, of course, you know, uh, the West helped set up ISIS to take out Syria. Now it's come back. It, 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 it is a mess. You ready to take some phone calls, Robert? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, Mike in Virginia, you're on the air with our guest, uh, the author uh, of the new book, Second Chance. Go ahead. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> I can't believe I got on. But anyway, uh, yeah, I have a question. I have some silver. I have some gold. I got a lot of silver, let's put it that way, and some gold. My house has been paid for years ago, 20 years ago. What else could I do to, to help protect? You know what I mean? That's a great question. You know, congratulations for having silver. I, I like silver personally. I love gold. I have a lot of gold and silver. And the difference is between your philosophy and my philosophy is I like debt. You see, the reason I, 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 I teach people how to use debt is because debt is the new money. See, what happened after 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, the dollar became debt. And so when the financial pundits are telling the poor middle class to get out of debt, what the rich are doing is using debt. Ask your banker this question. Does a banker want your savings or does he want you to borrow millions of dollars from him? And, and this is simple, but it's also complex. There's different philosophies. I would either go with the pay for your house, but get one at a good bargain, stay in it forever, and then run entrepreneurial businesses uh, and, you know, do things like that and come up with new products, or you can go with the whole debt model and businesses, but you got to be smart, pretty darn smart to go with your model. I think that's the only problem with your model, Robert, is that if you know what you're doing, it's the best model. It's what the insiders use, but the general public is going to get basically uh, screwed over because they, they're not going to actually follow what you say. Try to explain it to people. Well, amen. You said, if you don't have any financial education, don't do what I do. And the reason I wrote Second Chance, I got this in three parts, the past, the present, and the future. And again, there's pictures throughout the same whole thing so that your kids can understand it. But what you do is up to you. I, you know, I learned my financial education began with my rich dad, who was my best friend's father, at age nine, teaching me to play Monopoly. And for about 30 years, we played Monopoly, you know, adults. And today, as an adult, I play Monopoly as an adult. You know, for the formula is four greenhouses, one red hotel. So in 2007, when the markets crashed, unfortunately, millions were losing everything. Guys like me were going to the very banks that set up the crash and saying, would you give me a couple of million dollars to go do this? You see, what I'm saying in Second Chance is that all coins have three sides, heads, tails, and, the middle, and in the middle, which is intelligence. To stand on the edge is intelligent. And what you're saying, I agree exactly with you, is be intelligent. 
hear what I'm saying, hear what you're saying, but ultimately it's up to you, the guy on the edge, that has to make up their own mind. I made up my mind a long time That's ago. That's right. I mean, the real fortune is in the arena. Fortune favors the bold, to quote uh, British SAS. But if you're going to get in the arena, you better be ready. That's right. You know, I didn't go to Vietnam after uh, one day. I spent two years practicing out at Camp Pendleton shooting rockets and machine guns at dummies. And then I went a few months later, I was in the real place. So you got to practice. That's one of my big complaints about school. What the silliest thing schools do? They punish you for making mistakes. Well, how in the world do you learn anything if you make mistakes? You know, how does the baby learn to walk? Absolutely. You got a war game, everything. Robert Kiyosaki <laughs> is our guest. Stay with us. More calls straight ahead. A lot of key uh, news breaking at InfoWars.com that I have not gotten to. Uh, stuff like elderly man facing 10 years over unloaded flintlock pistol. Uh, that's just an amazing story. Uh, walking while Jew, what they're not telling you. And if, if, if people attacking Jews in Europe get political support or now this uh, sit-in Black Lives Matter where black folks go in and kind of rough up and get in white people's faces, th th this is just racism being promoted and it's more divide and conquer. We should all just come together for freedom. I know it's a liberal cause celeb to hate Jews, but it, it just, it, it's, it's going nowhere. And, and the globalists are promoting it. And I assure you, every Jew on the face of the earth is teleported to the moon. We would still have major problems. So it's a scapegoat, it's an excuse, and it's sick. Uh, and uh, that's all I have to say on the subject. Uh, we're going back to our guest, uh, richdad.com, Robert Kiyosaki. Let's go ahead and go to Chris in Washington, then Vincent, Bubba, John, Eric, and others. Chris, your question for Robert. Yeah, my question is, uh, I lost a job of 12 years, turned the 401k into an IRA Roth at a credit union, and I'm wondering if that's really a safer place to put it. I also have recently put it into my wife's name, so she's a Japanese national, I could wire it to Japan, but I'm wondering if those counts would be frozen, would even keep me from wiring funds internationally. And is the 401k Roth, because it's a credit union, make it more safe? Again, I'm going to say all coins have three sides, heads, tails, and the edge. I don't have an IRA, I don't have a 401k, and I don't have a Roth, simply because my rich dad taught me how to manage my money without the control of the government. See, the 401k and the Roth IRA are government you know, vehicles, basically. And they're doing their best to get the poor and middle class to do something for their retirement. Now, that's good for most people. I wouldn't do it. I'm concerned about them because the market is at all time tops. So, what you, like I've always said, what you do is up to you. What I do is what I can do. For example, if Mark Zuckerberg called me right now and says, hey, why don't you start Facebook? You know, I, I, <clears throat> I can't even use my cell phone, much less, you know, create a. Create a so, you got to financially be involved in what you know. Yeah. And what your experiences are and all this, like, you know, a farmer would do something different. You know, a secretary would do something different. A doctor would do something different. But what, and I'm not against them. What the big banks have trained us to do is go to school, but they give us no financial education. Save money, which means give their money to the bank. You know, uh, pay your taxes, get out of debt, and invest for the long term in the stock market. I don't do that. And that's what Second Chance is about. Because you can't put all your eggs in one basket, Chris. But, but, but I mean, obviously, what do you think of his idea of getting money out of the country? Yeah, he better talk to an attorney because, um, yeah. I'll just tell you this much, they're cracking down very, very hard. That's right. I, I talked to, um, I'll talk to a lot of famous people that left the country years ago. And they, and they, they're, they're cracking down so hard right now. If you do anything, even smells illegal, you're in trouble. So you've really got to have good... Uh, Unless legal. you're an illegal alien, then you're above the law. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Vincent in North Carolina. You're on the air. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I guess probably what I just need to do is get the book. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Kiyosaki, I had uh, purchased your uh, one of your Rich Dad programs, which teaches... Uh, how to get into real estate investing, and about that time, which was shortly before I think the last time you were on Alex's program, I was uh, seriously looking into that, and then I realized that the housing market was really going down, that uh, it may be difficult for uh, 
somebody to get into, you know, renting properties and things like that. Hold on, Vincent. I'm going to hold you over. We're coming back in 70 seconds with Robert Kiyosaki. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Don't hang up, Vincent. I want you to finish your question. I can have a Harry Dent on who disagrees with gold and silver and then have a Kiyosaki on that agrees with it. I can have a Jim Rogers on. I can have a, I mean, we're giving you different perspectives, but from basically an honest perspective about how stuff's rigged at the top. And the only way to survive is to know how things are rigged and, and basically play off of that while you expose it. I think that's what we're getting at here today. But Vincent, specifically, finishing up your question, you, you were going to do real estate, but you saw what was happening in it. Go ahead, your question. I guess, I guess my, uh, the thing that uh, became problematic to me is how does a person succeed in a business or in real estate if so many uh, people are living off of subsidies and things like that and jobs are just kind of vanishing? Uh, I've noticed a lot of people, a lot of businesses here where I live have just closed down. Well, that's one thing about real estate is you got to be in the right area to be investing in it. A good question, Vincent. Uh, Robert, when is the right time to invest in real estate? Well, the first thing is I've been in real estate probably 45 years. And I started back in 1973, I believe. I took a little uh, infomercial class, you know, 385 bucks, and I learned how to buy real estate for nothing down. But as the instructor said to my little class, I was a still a Marine, he says, your education begins when you leave the class. You have to go out and practice. So I went out, his instruction was, each person in the class had to go look at 100 properties, not buy anything, but write an evaluation of it, and then buy something. Unfortunately, what our schools teach you is don't make mistakes. And so most people don't want to go through that process of the 100, you know, looking at 100 properties, making a lot of mistakes, being stupid all the time. And then finally, the lights go on in your head. If you're going to do real estate, stocks, bonds, currencies, goldfish, whatever you want to do, you have to go through that process. Of Absolutely. you gotta, you got to lose to know how to win, to quote Aerosmith. Well, you, you've got to make mistakes to learn. And that's why my poor dad, like I said, a PhD, head of education in the state of Hawaii, graduated from college in less than two years. The reason he was not successful is because he never made any mistakes. So when he got fired from his job as head of education for the state of Hawaii, after running for candidate for lieutenant governor as a Republican in the Communist Republic of Hawaii, he couldn't work. He didn't know what to do. Here is guy a PhD. He's unemployed at age 50. And that's the monopoly cult system versus the free market, and the cult system's taking over, folks. John in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. No, Alex. I was uh, in, in high school back in, uh, when Nixon took us off the gold standard. And the first thing I noticed that it, through the 1950s, everything I paid uh, five cents or 10 cents for, comic books, soda pop, candy bars, everything started climbing. That's right. And it hasn't stopped since. And what I want to ask your guest is he really thinks 2016 is when the, the brakes are going to burn out on the inflation engine and everything's going to go to hell? The answer, my answer is, uh, the job of a prophet is to be wrong. I mean, Alex and I are the same guy. We're just different nationalities. We're trying to tell people, wake up. Don't let it, don't be a victim of Yeah, it. we're giving you our best guess. It doesn't mean we know everything. Yeah, we're doing our best, you know, like, we're kind of like Howard Stern. We're shock jocks trying to say, hey, wake up. Take a look around. See what's going on. Don't just do as you're told, like they do in school. So I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen in 2016. But if it does, like a Boy Scout, are you prepared for it? I'll just say this last thing here is this. When that market comes down, the rich are going to get richer. What are you going to do? You That's right, because they're going to be prepositioned, and there's things little guys can do. Then, then you'll get bigger, and we need the patriots, the liberty lovers, the conservatives, the, you know, the, 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 the classical liberals to know this stuff so it's not just a bunch of cronies like Nancy Pelosi making money. Robert Kiyosaki, thank you so much. I hope you'll come back in a few months when the new book comes out. Uh, as well, Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs. Thank you very much, Alex. Amazing interview. I think that was a really good interview.